hey guys so welcome back to my channel i'm so excited to come to you guys today with this ice cream inspired ice cream cake um so i posted a short on my channel back on monday june 27th which was actually national ice cream cake day so i wanted to come back and show you guys how i did this cake so if you're interested in seeing how i did it please be sure to stay tuned and continue watching the video so what you're seeing here is a detailed uh, ingredient list of how um, I'm going to be making my cakes. Um, I'll be sure to give a full description in the uh, description box below. But just to briefly go over some of these things, um, I'm using box cake mix. And usually when I use box cake, box cake mixes, what I do is I um, usually alter them. So I'll use flavorings, I may use an extra egg. Well, this time around, I used an extra egg and I used butter instead of oil. Even though you see oil in here, I didn't use oil. Um, I used all butter. Um, not only that, I usually like to use Duncan Hine cake mixes, but I had somebody else shop for me. So they got some other stuff that I'm not used to using, but I made it work anyway. Um, uh, what else did I use? I always use almond milk, but instead of a half a cup of almond milk, I use a full cup of almond milk. I really like using almond milk in cakes. Um, so you see that there. And then I, um, specifically for my chocolate cakes, um, my typical recipe is uh, using chocolate chips for extra texture and flavor, as well as chocolate fudge pudding mix. Now, you see chocolate in the video, but I usually use chocolate fudge mix, but the chocolate worked just fine as well. Um, and then for my butter cake, I used French vanilla, which also turned out well, even though I never used it before. So like I said, I'll include the full ingredient recipe ingredient list down below. So if you're interested in that, please be sure to check it out. So at this part of the baking process, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I split up my batter. Now the recipe calls for six cups of batter and um, in the bottom portion, you're gonna have four cups and in the top portion, you're gonna have two cups. So since I'm doing a marble cake and I have two flavors, I'm gonna be doing two cups of each flavor in the bottom portion. Uh, so two cups of yellow, two cups of chocolate and that'll give me four. And then in the top portion, I'm doing about a cup to a cup and a half of each flavor. So all together, you should have four cups in the bottom portion and then two to three cups. Yeah, two to three cups in the top portion. So when it comes to marbling my cakes, I don't do anything special. Um, right here, you see me using a butter knife. Um, you can use a toothpick or not a toothpick, but a skewer. You can use a skewer as well, but I'm using a butter knife. And pretty much what I do is I go side to side, up and down, until I get the swirled effect that I want. Um, if you feel the need to add extra yellow cake batter, now this is if you have two cake batters or multiple cake batters rather. If you feel the need to add more of one color or more of one flavor, uh, feel free to do so because after I marbled it, I noticed that there was a lot of chocolate compared to the yellow batter. So what you will see me do is add a little more yellow batter on top and then that gave me uh, the look that I wanted. So you wanna make sure that your cake is set for 325 degrees and you want to bake this cake for an hour to an hour and a half everybody's oven is different so you want to make sure you pay attention um, if you have a thermometer that works as well um, but I did my cakes for an hour and this is what it looks like and I did have extra batter left over so I ended up making a small square cake so this is what my cakes look like and now let's get to the assembly so before I get into really assembling this cake I'm just cutting off the dome part portions of my cake um, the correct term for this is leveling your cakes and essentially you're just cutting off the excess cake so that your cakes have a flat smooth surface and I did this to both the top and bottom portion so that when you stack them together they lay flat. The 
next thing I'm doing is that I'm trimming off um, the edges of my cake. Um, you don't have to do this. This is completely optional. You can leave the cake as is. You can frost it. You can cover it in fondant. What I did do was I created a chocolate mold um, out of the bottom portion of the cake. And it's essentially going to act like a, a cupcake liner. So by trimming off the edges of the actual cake, it'll help for the cake to sit inside the mold uh, nicely. So for this to actually be an ice cream cake, I have to fill it with ice cream. So my inspiration behind this were the Dairy Queen cakes. And if you're familiar with the Dairy Queen ice cream cakes, they have layers of ice cream, uh, cookie layers, and fudge. Um, there's no actual cake in it. At least the ones I've had, they don't have any cake in them. Right now I'm cutting out the center of my cake. Um, I'm not cutting too deep because I still want some cake to be on the bottom so that it can hold the filling inside. I'm cutting deep enough so that I have enough area to place my filling. My first layer of filling is going to be crushed up Oreo cookies. Um, I just crushed these up in a Ziploc bag and then went over it with a rolling pin. But if you wanted a finer crumb, you could use a food processor. Um, the next layer is going to be hot fudge. And this is just regular jarred fudge. Um, I drizzled it instead of like spooning it in there because I'm not a big fan of fudge. The last layer I'm going in with is vanilla ice cream. And then I'm going to top off the uh, filling with another layer of cookie crumbles as well as another layer of fudge and then I'm going to seal it off with some cake scraps. This is the chocolate mold I was talking about and um, as you can see the bottom cake layer was able to slide nicely into there by me trimming off the edges and I just put a, uh, a dam of frosting on the bottom. Cupcake liner would have something to adhere to.
Now I'm going in again with my buttercream and a 1M piping tip and I'm just creating the ice cream swirl. You want to take your time with this because it is kind of an odd shape to frost but if you just follow the lines you'll be able to catch on pretty easily. And of course you're going to want to go back and fill in any gaps. Now I didn't have a lot of fudge to begin with, but I'm just going in with what I had left over to create a chocolate, almost kind of like the chocolate dipped ice creams, but like I said, since I didn't have a lot of fudge, it's kind of more of like a drizzle. Next I'm going in with sprinkles. I love sprinkles, so I'm going to be pretty heavy handed when it comes to these. Last but not least, I'm going in with three cherries. I've inserted toothpicks in them to help them stay on top of the cake and not slide off. And that's pretty much it. If you want to add a ribbon or some writing on the cake board, you can do that. Or you can just leave it as is. I'm going to add a ribbon to it um, just to give it that little touch. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share if you care. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.